Number 10 then, the last question in this specimen paper for the new hire, paper 2. What we've got is the wave equation. It says, these two waves, when added together, produce this new single wave, with an equation in this form. You have to find the values of k and alpha. That's the first part for four marks. Well, there's a very quick way of doing it, which you're not allowed to do. Mention that afterwards. So you'll have to say this. Well, if you're adding these together, it means you've got this. You've got sine t plus root 3 cos t have to make this. K cos of t minus alpha. Well, what we'll do is we'll expand this part. That'll be k times, and that'll be cos t cos alpha. You just look up the front to check. Remember, the switches with the cosine one plus sine t sine alpha. Oh, just made it for a bump to graph. And that gets the mark, but I like to rearrange it so that I've got the coefficient separate from the variable. So I've got k cos alpha times cos t plus k sine alpha times sine t. Now these two things are meant to be the same. So that means the cos term equals a cos term and the sine term equals a sine term. Do the sine one first. So I've got k sine alpha is the coefficient of sine t, and that's just 1. And I've got k cos alpha is the coefficient of cos t, and that's root 3. Now the marking scheme goes a wee bit haywire here because what it says is you get one mark just for knowing to add them and say it's equal to this. One mark for expanding this, and one mark for making the statement of these two parts. That only leaves one mark then for working out k and alpha. Well, I'm still going to stick to my rigorous demonstration of it. How do we get k? If you square and add them, then you'll have k squared equals, because sine squared plus cos squared makes 1, 1 squared plus root 3 squared. But I'm just going to jump in now with, because I recognise the answer is 2, because I've got a 1, 2, root 3 triangle. And if you do 1 divided by 2, the case will cancel, and you have sine over cos makes tan. So the tan of alpha will be 1 over root 3. This is one you know, 1, 2, root 3. That's a funny looking triangle there. Where this part here would be, I'll put, still put 60, 30, but I'll change it to radians. So if the tangent is 1 over root 3, that's the opposite over the adjacent. That's opposite of that 30, which is the pi upon 6. So that means alpha is pi upon 6. And I might have seemed a bit hasty doing that, because I should have justified that by saying, well, what's happening here? The sine is positive, all sine, tan, cos. The cosine's positive, so it is indeed in the first quadrant. Suppose this graph itself showed you that alpha was just a small amount forward. Just a small point of interest before you go on to part B. The phasor's way of adding these two would be this. The sine is generated by a horizontal vector of just length 1. As that rotates, this point here would generate a sine curve. The root 3 cos is generated by a vector at right angles of length root 3. As that rotates, it would generate a cosine curve of amplitude root 3. So when they go together, they'll form this resultant one. That's the result of the two of them. So you can either consider it ahead of the sine, or behind the cos. And here it wants it behind the cos. So it wants this part here. So I'll just complete my triangle here. 1, 2, root 3. And you know that triangle already. That's going to be the 60. That's going to be the 30. So straight away, I know the answer to this. is going to be 2 cos minus 30. Amplitude 2, and it's 30 degrees behind the cos. Still, part B, which they've called C here. Calculate the value of the t-coordinate of point P if P has a y-coordinate of 1.2. So just use this equation then. That equation was y equals 2 cos t minus pi upon 6. So what's t if 
y is 1.2, 2 cos t minus pi upon 6 equals 1.2. So how can you find t? Just get rid of all the bits and pieces. Get rid of that 2. Cos of t minus pi upon 6 is 1.2 divided by 2, so that's 0 0.6. t minus pi upon 6 will be inverse cos of 0 0.6. Now you can either do this in radians or degrees. You can do it degrees if you like, but as long as you change it into radians afterwards, because the answer has to be in radians. You may as well just do it in radians anyway. There's nothing to be scared of. Just put your calculator into radian mode and it'll just give you the numbers you actually need. So that's that setup. If you've got this type of calculator, shift setup, and there it is, four, press four, and it puts it into radian mode. Now you can just do inverse cos of 0.6 and it'll give you the answer, 0 0.927, etc. I'll just put it over here, 0 0.927 and so on. Now you can use your cast diagram if you like. All sine, tan, cos. That cosine was positive. So this angle is either in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. It's either this amount ahead of zero or it's this amount behind it, which means it's that amount short of all the way around. It's that amount short of 2 pi. So your two answers will either be that, 0 0.927, or it'll be 2 pi, in radian, so 2 pi for the complete turn, minus 9, 0 0.927. Now, this may well be an exact value. This may well be an exact value. But your answer can't be an exact value because this thing certainly isn't. This was this big decimal thing that went on forever. So your answer will have to be decimals. The other thing you know is you're looking for this point. There are two points with a height of 1.2. There was one here as well. But I don't want that one. I want the second one. So this is the one that will produce the answer. So that means t is going to be 2 minus that. May as well not work it out just now. It's going to be 2 pi minus 0 0.927 plus pi upon 6, because I want the second answer. Second value of t is that. You could have put that into your calculator first of all, and then added the pi upon 6, but why not just do it all at once? So with that answer still sitting in the calculator, of course, the full value of 0 0.927, etc., I just typed in the 2 pi, Minus answer plus that, and that comes to 5.879 and so on. And it doesn't specify any accuracy for this t coordinate, so that means I'm just going to use t equals 5. Point, oh, I might as well leave it all in 879 because that was a 4 next, wasn't it? There we are.